Who doesn't like a sick looking tomahawk? Well folks, welcome to the channel. Welcome to another episode. Today we're looking at the CRKT Chogan T-Hawk Woods Hawk. talking. That's what we are, have here in the Blade Boot Camp out here in the woods, having a really good time with this thing. Uh, really cool laser engraving. Just got to give a quick shout out to uh, the Damage Factory. Those guys are amazing. They can do all kinds of laser etching on anything from uh, blades and knives and firearms and anything in between. They did this one for me, gifted this over to me for me to be able to just enjoy, but also I wanted to do a quick video uh, on this. So uh, just thank you guys for sending this over for us to test out and review. And uh, this is kind of a, a beefy, larger tomahawk woods hawk is what this is designed for. You know, we did the Nobo a while ago and you're gonna see a lot of different things in this video. Not only how does this perform, we're gonna run it up against the hardcore um, hammers, uh, uh, hatchet as well. We're going to run it against up against the Nobo. So there's going to be a lot of different discussion on whether or not this, how this performs compared to other tools that we've tested like this. Uh, we're also going to do a, a quick demonstration on a paracord wrap, a neck wrap for your hatchets and tomahawks just to show you how to do that. I have recently started doing it. This is my very first one, but just wanted to do a quick demo for you guys so you'll get that as an added little bonus in this video. So with that, guys, let's go ahead, hit the woods, see what this thing can do, what it can't do, and whether or not the T-Hawk Chogan Woods Hawk is gonna be the right tool for you the next time you hit the trail. So let's go ahead and get to it. All right, let's take a look here at the head itself again. Awesome laser engraving from the Damage Factory. Ultra cool. So this is 1055 steel. You're going to see that on a lot of mid-priced uh, hatchets and tomahawks from U.S. as well as overseas produced. This is made in Taiwan. The head is made in Taiwan, and then um, the handle itself is a hickory handle. So uh, what we're looking at here is a cutting edge of three and a quarter. Then you have the secondary bevel that is unsharpened back here, that if you did want to sharpen that beard, you could absolutely do that. Then you have that nice hammer on the back for this particular one. They do have the version that has the spike if you want more of a combat style. Then from uh, edge to back pommel here, you're looking at about seven and a quarter inches long overall. And then where it flares out in the thickness right here, you're looking at half an inch. So like the previously reviewed Nobo, uh, the edge was pretty bad out of the box. It was pretty dull, um, pretty wide, wasn't really happy with it, wasn't gonna do a lot of work for you. So I took it to my WorkSharp um, grinder, my Ken Onion Edition uh, WorkSharp um, sharpener, and put an edge on it, really beveled it out, uh, put a co convex grind on it, and really gave it the performance that it needed. So know that if you are going to purchase any of the CRKT you know, um, tomahawks like this with the friction heads uh, and, the, and that type of thing that we're looking at today, know that you are gonna have to put a secondary uh, edge on it and really go to, you know, spend about a half hour with it if you're gonna get the performance that you're gonna see in this video. Otherwise, it's gonna be pretty blunt, but you get that with a lot of, I would say, sub $100 axes and tomahawks. They, it's just a safety thing that I think is dumb, but uh, it's, anno uh, you know, and it's annoying for us, the user, but once you get the edge on it, it held a great edge. You know, the 1055, they're doing a great heat treat on it. I didn't see any um, over chipping, rolling damage. You know, this is, has not been tuned up since we did it. I still feel that really good edge on there. I just have one or two very minor, uh, you know, rolls in it that I would see on any other 1055 steel, you know, after the use that we have done, including on like the S-Wing that we did a review on that I absolutely loved and blew away the $120 um, one that we tested out, but, uh, good for, for the price, totally doable after a hard day of work, you know, you'll have a slight burring in certain little tiny areas, put it on a ceramic rod for a minute and you'll be good to go. So now we've talked about the head and the steel itself. Now, how did it actually perform out in the woods? This is a woods hawk. That's what it's com 
uh, pitched as. Now this is gonna weigh a total of two pounds, or a total weight. So it is the heaviest out of all three axes and hatchets and tomahawks that we're looking at today. Um, and that's because of this back pommel. For chopping, you know, it did a good job, took pretty good bites out of the wood for that weight class and for the design of the, the tomahawk. I was impressed with its capability in that regard. Uh, once again, I put my edge on it. I could easily do feather sticks with it, which was really cool. I, I mean, it was awesome with that convex grind with that work sharp um, Kin Onion Edition. Those things are amazing. Links below. Uh, over to Amazon and Blade HQ. Those things are freaking awesome if you need. A, if you do a lot of hatchet work and like large tool machetes and you know tomahawks and you just want to put edges on a lot of the time, those things are awesome for that. So um, uh, did feather sticking great. Uh, you know more detailed chopping I could easily do. You know and, and fine cutting for like a, a steak. You know for like a tent peg or something like that. If I was making a spear, very easy to do it in that regard. The hammer itself really helps out a lot in that regard to be able to pound it in just very simply, very easily. You're not missing, you're not over striking, under striking. It's very easy to do that. And that hammer is a big selling point for a woods hawk. And that's why you know I, I'm really glad I got this version of it versus the spiked version. Hammers just seem to be a little bit more versatile for me overall if I have a choice. So that was a big plus as well. Splitting, I wasn't super impressed with, to be honest. It took a, a really hard time for me to kind of get it to bite in, and I really had to use a lot of energy to get it to finally bite in and then split the wood. I just was fumbling around a lot of the time. Um, the other uh, tools that we're going to look at today and some other ones that we've tested in the past, like that S-Wing, um, just seemed to, to bite in easier, split easier. I'm not fighting with it, trying to get the, the head to bite into that piece of wood and then split the piece of wood. Once it did finally get in there, the head did a good job. But uh, that really brings us to the, the next level compared to what else is out there. How did it really perform in comparison to the other two tools uh, like the CRKT Nobo and the Hardcore Hammers Supernaturalist. All right, so we'll go ahead and hit price here and we're gonna have links in the description below today to all of the hatchets and tomahawks that we are talking about. They're all able to be purchased either on Blade HQ or Amazon. When you guys use those hyperlinks, helps me get out there and make videos just like this. So thank you for your continued support, not only through your subscription, your liking and sharing this on social media and with your buddies and friends, uh, but then also when you do purchase any gear, using the hyperlinks really helps us out a ton. So this guy here is gonna run you about uh, $40. And uh, for the price, for what you're getting, you know, in, in the materials, you know, I think it's very reasonable. The fit and finish, uh, all that type of stuff is right there. And what you're going to see with other materials like USA made, you know, 1055 or 1050, you know, hatchets out there. Um, the Nobo is going to run you about $10 less. So the other one that we've been kind of running into discussing and we're going to be putting head to head and just all the different things that we're doing with this video. So about $10 less, obviously the head is a little bit smaller and you don't have that uh, hammer on the back end. Obviously the handles are exactly the same. So you're going to get a little bit cheaper in that regard. And then the USA made hardcore hammers um, hatchet supernaturalist. That guy's going to be about 60 bucks. So about $10 more than what we're looking at here on um, the uh, Chogun. And you are getting that US quality. You are definitely getting a better quality head as well with the 4140 steel and then um, all USA made, obviously. But all three of these tomahawks and hatchets do not come with sheaths. So you're gonna have to pay more if you do not wanna go custom. So the good quality leather sheaths, they really do a good job CRKT. I just really wish that they would come with the hawks. Um, but uh, they're gonna have a large belt attachment, great attachments all the way around, really lots of lashing options, and they do a really good job. It's good quality leather. The, uh, this one's gonna be about $20 more, so you're really looking at like 60 to $65 for the entire setup if you're gonna go that way. Uh, it's gonna be about 20 to $25 more for this guy, so you're gonna be looking at about uh, 50 to $55 for the Nobo, and then you're looking at about $25 on this guy for the hardcore um, supernaturalist and so that's going to put it about $85 so just things to consider 65 55 85 depending on what you're looking at okay so we're going to look at the paracord wrap here in just a moment now this is a 19 inch handle overall hickory made handle and out of the box these usually will come pretty tight where they don't want to fall but as you use them they're going to want to loosen up as you can see right there and so instead of constantly having to worry about that and you know 
yanking it and swinging it, you know, to try and get it to sit there solidly. Uh, a simple leather or paracord wrap is a great way, just kind of help keep that there, particularly if you're doing a lot of like throwing with the Nobo, you know, which is great for, uh, or whatever, just, it's a simple thing and it's extra paracord that you can have, you know, in case of emergency situation. So I wanna show you how to do this very simply. Uh, on your friction head uh, tomahawks and axes. And it's a great thing for overstriking as well. If, it, if you have a seated head, but you're concerned about overstriking and just you want to protect that piece of wood for as long as possible on your tomahawk or ax, then uh, this is a great way to do that as well. Kind of just give it a little bit of protection. Okay, so I've unwrapped it. And all you do is loop over and wherever this part ends on your cordage is where the wrap is going to begin and move its way up. You want to make sure that you have just a little extra sticking up above your head here with this little loop. Then you just begin to wrap. There we go. Just give you a little perspective there on what I'm doing. It's a little tricky to do all on frame here for you. I'll do the best I can. So you can see I'm just doing it as tight as I can. Now you could soak this in water ahead of time. I've not done that yet, but, uh, and then, you know, stretch it as tight as you can and then let it dry and it should give it a little extra, you know, um, tightness to the overall feel on the head. Okay, so here we are, we're at the end. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run it through the loop, the last little bit here. And then I'm gonna take this tail, which is gonna pull this loop tight, and I'm just gonna pull down on it. Now, obviously this is just a kind of a demonstration. You'll have a little bit extra. You could, you know, snip that off. You want a little bit to spare hanging out there if you can. But the, the nice thing is if you ever want to unwrap this, either to use it or over time, you know, if it does start to inch down, you just want to rewrap it. You just got to grab this little guy, this little tab right here, pull it back out. You're going to pull that loop back out and then you just unravel the entire thing and basically do the process backwards. But there it is for you. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Uh, you can mess with it a little bit. You can knot it off, you know, do different things with the little extra piece right there. But that will keep the head from falling down as often, you know, and I mean, it's just going to bump against that, up against that paracord. So I'm just going to have very minute sliding back and forth on a friction head and then it'll be a great protector for over strikes with this tomahawk as well as any other axe i decide to do it with well i'll just come out and say it it did not perform as well as these other two for two reasons the first one is weight coming in at the heaviest uh, at two pounds it it exhausts you you know it's fatiguing and because it's just a straight off the the head handle with no curvatures and or anything like that you really got to grip this thing well and you're constantly re-gripping the tool and as you're striking the wood it doesn't remove as much chunks because it's so heavy and you're trying to get it into the the material and the thickness of the head the the wide blade all the way back to where the handle sits in it, it's just it it's not taking out chunks like I would prefer. Now the Nobo has a very similar blade length. I have as a very similar um, width all the way to the handle, all those things, but it is gonna be a few ounces lighter coming in at one pound, nine ounces. Uh, and then it is gonna be just a quicker overall tool in your hand so that when you are you know, striking the piece of wood each time, it's not as fatiguing, it's not as exhausting. It feels faster, more nimble in the hand. It doesn't feel like you have this anvil at the top of your handle so it just makes it for a better woods tool in that regard now compared to these two the hardcore hammers has a much thinner i just want to bust this out here for us much thinner shoulder and face to the the axe heads or the tomahawk heads you can just see they're way thinner in the blade angle i did not have to resharpen this out of the box i mean this came razor sharp ready to go when i purchased this and when we tested this about a year ago now and just it's a way thinner for longer before it hits up here near the shoulder and gets to get into the handle so it's taking out more chunks biting deeper into the piece of wood with each strike it's going to weigh less than the other one than the chogan so there's a less muscle fatigue in that regard and it's just going to be a better performer. It's split wood easier, and you're still getting that hammer, and you're still getting all the, the aspects that 
the CRKT does. Now you're gonna pay more money for it, obviously, but you're gonna have a longer edge retention on it and just be an overall performer. When you're looking for this kind of style, uh, than the uh, Chogun would be. So in my opinion, between all three of these, if you really want just that more inexpensive, you like the friction head on a handle, you know, tomahawk, you know, you could use it as a weapon if you had to, you know, feel, then the Nobo would be the one that I would recommend. And if you need that really, really, you know, awesome wood processor that's gonna be pretty lightweight, pretty compact, but going to outperform what the Chogun can do, then I would say the Hardcore Hammer Supernaturalist is the way to go. So I hope this video, guys, has shown you what this T-Hawk can do, what it can't do. And uh, thank you guys so much for coming over here and checking out the channel. Please subscribe, comment, like, share this video. Love to hear your guys' thoughts, any questions you have. If you're not a current subscriber, I invite you to become part of the GT family. We're throwing up videos like this every single week. You regular subscribers are amazing, and thank you so much for helping the channel continue to be what it is. Check us out on, on the all the relevant social Social media. That's a great way to see what's upcoming projects we're working on. And finally, guys, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared, and we'll see you out there.